What's going on, Jerome's? Your Minnesota Fine Vikings are three and one, the best three and one team in NFL history. I can't do it. I, I can't say it. But I, even though the Vikings haven't won convincingly the last two weeks, a win is still a win. A Vikings still three and one. The money still spends the same. So we're gonna go over the top ten. 10 uh, storylines uh, for the Vikings and determine if they're an overreaction, if they're legit or eh, kind of. First one up, Vikings are just lucky. That one is a massive overreaction. It is extremely hard to win a game in the National Football League. And yes, the Lions giving away, giving away, giving away now uh, two weeks ago. And then the Saints bombed out and depleted, looking like Afghanistan rolling in with Andy Dalton. But uh, it was still a game. It's still a game. Those guys are still professionals, too. Their coaches are still pros, pros. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so the Vikings were able to get it done under weird circumstances, you know, a road game with all the international travel and shenanigans. So, uh, I, I mean, if the Bills or the Eagles had won their last two games like this, no one's saying anything. It's like, you know, uh, good teams just always find a way to win. Blah, 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 blah. And guess what? These two games... Vikings the last couple of years, maybe they would have lost them. They probably would have lost them. We've seen this movie before. So the fact that the Vikings, uh, even though it's not pretty, are just finding ways to grit out wins, whether it's the team, other team making another stake uh, or the Vikings getting a couple fortune bounces, you will take that. You will because good teams win the games they're supposed to and they win the games that maybe they're not supposed to. Know what I mean? Uh, next up, storyline number two, Justin Jefferson is back. That is legit, man. So, a big time week one, a buck 84, two touchdowns against the Packers and Jairo Alexander. So, kind of slow two weeks. Jeff Okuda got super physical with him. And, and uh, oh, sorry, the the Eagles like double and triple teamed him. Darius Big Play slayed Jeff Okuda, uh, got physical with him, and the Lions double and triple teamed him. But the Saints, I mean, the Saints were just like, hey, we're just ha going to have Marshawn Lattimore shadow you, and Justin Jefferson ate him up, man. Uh, 10 catches for a buck 47 on 13 targets. Also ran for a touchdown. So, yeah, Je Justin Jefferson is back. Also, he's still on pace for like 1,600 yards uh, receiving. So I, I like that Kevin O'Connell made it a priority to get him involved early with some very easy swing passes. It seemed like he was in motion a lot more, and he responded by making some big-time clutch catches uh, down the stretch. Uh, next up, storyline number three. Kevin O'Connell's game management needs work. I think that's legit. And I think that he will say the same thing where this is, it's only his fourth game in the national football league, but uh, end of first half, not using your timeouts, not going it, going for it on two of the fourth downs. And yeah, the two, uh, uh, the two delay uh, delays of game. I think some of that is on O'Connell. Some of it is on the team. Some of it is not working on very specific situations. So uh, I do think that it's a work in progress, but the thing is, the problem we have with Zimmer's game management is that over eight years, he kept making the same mistakes over and over and over again. It seemed like he never learned. O'Connell, I mean, we'll give him a shot. I think that he will learn from his mistakes. I think the key is, hey, don't sweat over making a mistake because all coaches are going to make them. Just do you make the same mistake again egregiously over and over and over, or do you learn? So I think that O'Connell is going to uh, get up and get after it. Next up, storyline number four, Kirk Tober was delayed. I think that one was kind of legit. Uh, where Kirk Cousins didn't have his best, cleanest game against the Saints, the Vikings certainly left a lot of points uh, out there. And I, I do think that pass rush certainly had uh, a, a big part of it, uh, especially it, it was so weird. That's the offensive line it had pass protection issues, except it, it was O'Neal. It, it, it wasn't Garrett Bradbury. But hopefully that gets sutured up. Uh, I mean, the Saints, of course, having Cameron Jordan and Marcus Davenport, like we said before the game, those are bad dudes. And even though the Saints pass rush had been muted throughout most of the season, I mean, those guys were still going to get up and get after it. So I do think that this was more opponent uh, 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 opponent dependent like Kirk Cousins struggling at times because he did have some phenomenal moments as well but it, it wasn't the big time 300 yards four touchdowns zero pick uh, have there be no uh, doubt type game I mean it was clear that him and the receivers were having some miscommunication issues uh, he missed a couple wide open receivers uh, in the back of the end zone which uh, would have been nice having touchdowns instead of field goals but they'll get things fixed next up storyline number five Dalvin ain't right I think that's the overreaction where the fact that it's not a new injury, so it takes that mystery out. Put the harness on. You know, last year against uh, Pittsburgh with the same injury and the same harness, he ran for 205 and two touchdowns. Uh, but 20 carries for 76 yards, 3.8 yards per carry. I mean, that's not destroying, uh, but he he was that close from breaking a couple monster runs. Number one was uh, Demario Davis tripping him, and the other one it was a shoestring tackle. I mean, Dalvin, 
it, it does seem like Dalvin gets tripped up for relatively easily, but I, I mean, if say, say Dalvin broke that 50 yard touchdown. So then he's got 21 carries for a, a buck 36 and a touchdown. I mean, no one's talking about that and it's exact same thing minus one play. So y- yes, it, it did seem like later in the game, running the ball was sort of pointless because he was only getting no gain or one yard or two yards. But I mean, Dalvin's going to be fine. There you go. Next up storyline. Number six, Don told needs to be fired. That started to become legit, where this whole bend but don't break offense, or excuse me, defense, the offense too, but the defense, it, it, it seems like nonsense. The Vikings came into this game 31st in yards allowed. They're only 10th in scoring, though, but it was just so damn frustrating, especially, I mean, let's be honest. Tottenham Stadium was major um, majority Vikings fans. I mean, the skull chant was loud. Uh, it was loud when the Saints were on offense. And, uh, I mean, you let Andy Dalton, with yeah, very limited practice time this week, uh, drive down and uh, score a 60-yard touchdown, a 78-yard drive, and also a 75-yard touchdown drive. I mean, that's ridiculous. Uh, and also, um, we, we made this point yesterday. It's like, hey, maybe Greg Joseph missing the PAT was some sort of game theory because if the Saints had only needed three, they would have settled for a field goal and then they kicked that 60 yard from the moon. But if they needed a touchdown, that would have changed the game, uh, the, the game plan and also the play calling. And maybe they marched their ass down and for 75 yards and score another touchdown at Dontel's defense. So maybe Greg Joseph, uh, seer of all things, was just planning ahead. Love it, man. Uh, next, uh, but I we said uh, before, we'll say it again. I think by week eight against Arizona, Ed Donatel will not be the defense coordinator of the Vikings. I think he'll be Mike Pettin. More. I mean, you, you have an assistant head coach who has 10 years of coordinator head coach experience and is known for being very aggressive in a 3-4 defense. So we'll, we'll see. Next up, number seven, Brian O'Neill's Garbaggio. That's obviously an overreaction. But it just sucks timing-wise because all of the hype were, hey, 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 Brian O'Neill, top right tackle in the game. ESPN, PFF, all the metrics saying Brian O'Neill is that dude. And then Cameron Jordan. I mean, hell, maybe Cameron Jordan respect. Maybe just read all that and just like, no. <laughs> but O'Neill will be fine. Just got humbled. Had a couple false starts as well. It's an extremely frustrating day. Uh, and maybe this is just one of those spots where, you know, one off thing. And maybe he just will never leave the country again, <laughs> which is also possible. Uh, next up. Storyline number eight, Cameron Tiny Dancer is becoming elite. I think we're in the kind of stage because he had a big time game. Yes, no Michael Thomas, Jarvis Juice Landry was dinged up, but going up against Chris Olave, he's, he's going to be a solid player in this league, but three passes broken up, five tackles, and you got to let Dancer be Dancer, man. Just having him play off coverage and having him sit in quarters defense or three deep or whatever, it's that, that, that's ridiculous. Like He is a press man guy. He's got length for days. He's more physical than his frame would suggest. Just let him be Cameron Dancer, man. Just let them do that. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna make a mistake, make a big mistake. I don't really care. But whether it's Dancer or Peterson or Caleb Evans or whoever on the outside, just be uh, aggressive. That's one of the things that Dantel needs to change or he needs to get out of the way. Next up, number nine, Daniel Hunter is washed. That's obviously an overreaction, but. It's starting to be kind of frustrating, man. I mean, the Vikings are having 99 problems, and finding Daniil is one of them. Where, I mean, Zadarius has been the Vikings' pass rush, legitimately. I mean, DJs look good at times, but Daniil uh, hasn't had sacks since week one. Uh, his He's only had uh, eight pressures on the season, and it's just really frustrating, man. Like, maybe this whole new role of him being a stand-up outside linebacker, that ain't it. And you have seen as the weeks have progressed that he's more of a hand in the dirt guy, especially on money downs. So maybe that's what he needs to go back to. Maybe that's what Dante needs to change. Like it, just having a rigid scheme where players fit in, that ain't it. Uh, adapting your scheme to the players that you have. That's the way to go. Lastly, number 10, Matt Daniels is the best special teams coordinator in the national football league. Kind of. We're, we're getting there. I, I still think that is John Bones fossil, his, his former boss uh, with the Cowboys as well as the Rams. But I mean, Matt Daniels, I love his personality, man. Love that he's extremely aggressive, uh, both uh, going after punts, uh, also in coverage on, on punts and kicks. Uh, plus, in the return game, they're looking good. Ryan Wright is quickly becoming one of the better stories in the league in terms of being a UDFA. Uh, had that fake punt already dialed in, and maybe they have the green light if they get uh, the right look. Maybe it was a Kevin O'Connell call, but just having that in your back pocket ready to go is beautiful, man. Uh, and, I mean, Greg Joseph uh, missed PAT. 
So it is what it is. But uh, I do think that Matt Daniels has done phenomenal things uh, with the third phase. Uh, I think that the Vikings teams are just really, really solid right now. And you can tell that there's an energy. Like those guys, yeah. some teams, special teams, just treat it like whatever. You got your offense and your defense and special teams. Like, oh, you guys are the backups. Yeah, you, you guys are you know, playing this third phase and leave us alone, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, Viking special teamers, like, they're they're getting after it, whether it's C.J. Ham or Troy Dye or Josh Metellus. I mean, they like being out there. Brian Asamo, of course. They, they like being out there. They like representing, and it's just really, really beautiful to see, man. But uh, that's it. Uh, that's uh, tan, tan uh, storylines for the Vikings and determining if they're uh, an overreaction uh, or if they're legit or kind of. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull, production value.